Alright, so you've just whipped up something tasty. It's a steamy hot and looking all kinds of delicious. You're about to dig in when... BAM! A fly decided to crash your food party. Seriously? Now? Okay, don't freak out. We all know flies are the ultimate freeloaders, but does one little touch tell me your meal's a goner? Well, not necessarily. Sure. Flies have a rep for mingling with trash and all the jazz, which means they can bring some unwanted germs to the table. But here's the deal. Unless a fly decided to do the cha-cha on your chow, the chances of it causing any real trouble are pretty slim. Our bodies are pretty awesome at handling a few germs here and there. However, if you're cooking for peeps with weaker immune systems, like toddlers and elderly, maybe play it safe and ditch the flies landing zone. Stick around, cause we're about to dive into the nitty gritty of what flies are really up to and how you can keep your food safe. So grab your snacks, fly free hopefully, and let's get into it. What are flies up to? So, we've established that flies are the ultimate party crashers, but what's their deal really? Well, these little buzzes are basically the scavengers of the insect world. They're not just flying around to annoy us, they've got a whole routine going on. First off, flies are like the best sniffers around. They can pick up scent with these tiny hairs on their body that act like super sensitive noses. So when your food's out, they're like, oh hey, something smells good over there, and they make a beeline straight to your plate. Now here's the icky part. Flies can't chew like we do because they don't have teeth. Their mouth is more like a sponge or a straw. So when they lay on your grub, they spit out some digestive juices to break it down into a slurpy soup they can suck up. Well, yeah, it's kind of like they're throwing up on your food to eat. But wait, there's more. Flies also taste with their feet. Yep, you heard that right. The second they land, they check it out if what they're standing on is worth their time. And if you see they're rubbing their legs together, they're not plotting anything. They're just cleaning their tasting sensors to get a better feel of the feast they found. So while they're doing the thing, that's when they could be dropping off some of the unwanted germs we talked about earlier. But unless they're taking a long vacation on your victuals, their risk is pretty low. Still, it's a good idea to cover up your food and keep those freeloading flies at bay. Now let's dive into the dark side of our uninvited gases. When a fly lands on your food, even if just for a second, it's like a mini germ parade. Those tiny legs and even the tinier hairs all over their bodies are like germ taxes, dropping off all sorts of nasties from the last pit stop. And let's be real, flies are in dining in the cleanest spots in town. The main worry is what they bring to the table, literally. Flies can carry over 100 different pathogens, including some heavy hitters like E. coli, Salmonella, Hepatitis A, and rotavirus. That's not just about what's on their feet. When they vomit on your food to eat it, they're mixing all those germs from the last meal with their digestive juices. So if the bee is snacking on something sketchy before landing on your lunch, they could be serving up a side of bacteria and viruses. But before you swear off eating anything a fly has ever glanced at, remember this, not every fly is a walking biohazard. The risk depends on where the fly has been before, how long it hangs out on your food, and how strong your immune system is. For most healthy folks, a fly's quick touchdown isn't a one-way ticket to sick bill. However, if you've got a weak immune system, it's better to play it safe and cut away the part the fly touched. So how to keep your food fly free? And what to do if these uninvited guests just won't leave? Here's how to keep your eats on the fly free VIP list. Well, keep it covered. Like a top secret mission, keep your food under wraps. Under those mashed food tents or even a simple upside down bowl. You can also fan them off. Flies are terrible pilots of the breeze. Set up some fans around your grub to blow those pests away. You can also get some natural repellents. Get all mother nature on them. Plant some basil or mint around. Or dab some eucalyptus oil here and there. Flies hate that stuff. What if those flies just won't buzz off? 
can make some traps. Get crafty and make some vinegar traps. Just a ball, some cling wrap, and a few holes, and you've got yourself a fly jail. If you choose to light them up, flies are like moths. They can't resist a good light. But they also can't stand water bags hanging around. It messes with their tiny fly brains. So hang some near your doors. And last but not least, keep things tidy. Flies are like that one friend who only shows up when there's food. So no leftovers, no dirty dishes, no party crashers. And if all else fails, there's always the trusty fly sweater. It's old school, but it gets the job done. What are some common places flies hang out? Flies like to hang out at garbage, snacks, pet food, and um, presents left by your furry friends. They also love buckets, and pretty much any kind of standing water are like fly resorts. Compos, bright lights, and they are even heat seekers when it gets chilly. So that was everything you needed to know about if a fly hits on your food. Don't forget to subscribe to Factor Zone and tell us in the comments if you've experienced any of this or have another way of dealing with them. Also, please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed and as always, thanks for watching.